Welcome to Business Speak. Right, moving on. The broom. Closet. In we go. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Let's see what he says about that. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. And I'm so good at it as well. Hello, hello, Emma13. Hello. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'm waiting for my lady to turn up, for this is the broom closet of love. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd yeah. said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least she would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it but didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. But it has this brush. To mention it. It's fantastic. It has this monkey wrench. In fact, all of these. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Well, I'm sure we're going to say it's my favourite now. I'm not Stanley really was fat it. and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's <laughs> nothing here, when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so the as to ensure that your body is ending. taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. <laughs> he or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, <laughs> so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. Oh, yeah, right. absolutely. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No. No, I shall taunt you some more. Come on. Um, this is such amazing viewing, guys. I hope you're really enjoying this. Dad Nicole, hello. You've just joined us at the most epic bit of visual entertainment ever. We've been sat in this broom closet for about five minutes. Yes, I think we're done here. Yeah. Ah, second player. It's good. You too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. <laughs> Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? A fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Oh, Broom Closet Simulator 2014. Yes, I'd play that one. The Stanley Parable is absolutely fantastic game. It's a little bit old now. It's been out for a few years. But um, basically, it's just making decisions that 
you're moving through this office block, you're, you're, the narrator is, is saying you should do this, do that, you, it's up to you to decide whether you do it or not. And there's dozens of different endings to the game, and it's up to us to find as many as possible. Is he going to say anything? Is he? No, I think we've exhausted this one. But it's safe in here. There we go. Right, let's move on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Just a little bit. This is so incredibly well done, this. Right. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors <laughs> close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. <laughs> Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, Ooh, if he could just... than this. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Hey. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I want my broom closet I back. okay.
Nope, that didn't make it. Stanley Hello, Kate Foster. Screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> This is the story. Gertie of Simmers, a woman hello, named welcome Mariella. to the stream. Who else have I missed? Mariella woke up on a day hello. like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Casey the Dark, hello. Well, another ending, and that was a good ending. <laughs> Lady Sarcasm, Helia. And here we are again. Can we just do anything here? No, we can't. And back we are at the beginning again. All Let's of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, another waiting input. Input received! The end is never, never the end, the end. It's never. I must admit, I am so jealous of the voice of this guy. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, left, right, or meh. I know which ending Creeper Zone wants, but let's vote for this round. I might pick a few, I might ask you guys to pick a few, I might do a mix. This time round, I think we're going to ask you guys to vote. So left, right, or meh. I'm oh, probably going to get one vote. Right, one for right. Two for right. Um, yeah, to be, let's be honest with you, okay? They're um, computers in an office environment. You can guarantee somebody has been uh, watching porn on them. Well, meh is center. In fact, let's do meh. Yay! <laughs> okay, I think... I think right is getting the vote, so let's go right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Right. Let's see what we get in here. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Oh, Life without so. having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. 
Okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Hi guys, left or right? This time round I'm going to let you pick every single choice. That is a sexy room, isn't it? And that is a room of distinction. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to the shops and I'm basically going to buy some worn blue wallpaper and some tatty sofas and I'm just going to redecorate my living room that way. So, left, left. Two lefts, two rights. Three lefts. Right, three rights. Okay, next one. Next one's going to decide it. Left or right? Right, right it is. Stanley was so oh, yeah. bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Okay. And let's go over this time rather than jump off. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. <laughs> There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Yes, much. Hello. Apparently we have to let her back into our life. I hope she likes boxes. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can Next truly time. place your faith in another, 